Buongiorno. Good morning. It is day 39 on the Via Francigena, and we are coming to you from the beautiful Piazza del Campo in Siena, Italy. It is a great little tourist town. We had no time to explore. We did our best, but... We wandered around a little bit, appropriately enough. Uh, probably appropriately put a few enough. kilometers onto our uh, shoes a yesterday. Few, a few hilly kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> but today, we are walking on to the next stage. We are heading to Ponte de Arbia. We're going to hopefully meet up with some new pilgrims that maybe yeah. started in Siena. We're staying in the area hostel, so uh, the cultural center. So I'm hoping for a communal dinner and enjoy some time with some new faces for these last 12 days of walking. We got 25 kilometers to go today. It's a little mm. hilly. And of course, it starts with getting out of this piazza. Well, andiamo. After the Porta Roma, you make a left-hand turn. We almost missed it because it was not well marked. Today, while we are walking to Puente de Arbia, we are going to answer questions that you have sent us. I think we've got 14 or 15 questions that people posted on Instagram or Facebook or as comments to videos. We thank you so much for asking the questions because Today we have 25 kilometers, and these questions are gonna be the thing that distract our minds. Yeah. The first question comes from Teresa Sylvester, who says, why didn't we start our walk in the UK or in France? That's a great question. So of course, the Via Francigena starts in Canterbury, England, and walks through uh, just a couple of days in England, and then walks through the entirety of France, all of Switzerland, and then into Italy. And we um, have dreamed of Italy for a very long time. It was something we wanted to do for our honeymoon 15 years ago. So it's been our bucket list and we knew that we wanted to walk Italy. So we had a couple choices. So quick answer. Um, we looked at when we needed to arrive in Rome and we worked backwards for the number of days we could walk. And that's how we determined starting in Aigle, Switzerland. Well, we also knew that we wanted to walk Switzerland. We wanted to climb the Great St. Bernard Pass and have that experience. So we could have started in Canterbury and like walked a day and bust ahead and, you know, really bust ahead a lot. But the problem was we were losing what pilgrimage is all about. So our thought was now we have something to come back to. Our next question is from, oh, please don't be mad if I butcher your name, Bridget Piernik Yoder. I feel good about that. Wants to know how much walking we did to prepare for our Camino. After that last hill we just climbed, not enough. Not enough. We live <laughs> in the flatlands of Ohio. It is very hard to mimic this. Yeah, I think if we would have got maybe out onto some country roads that had some more up and down, that might have helped. But the bottom line is, you don't have to do a lot to prepare. If you're in relatively good shape, meaning you go for walks, you can tackle Disney World like a champ. <laughs> um, I think those are helpful things. The best thing that we did to prepare was on our spring break, we did what we called an Ohio Camino, and there are videos on YouTube about that. We walked seven miles a day. Ish. Ish. A few we, a little higher, I think. No, we walked 10 because we walked yeah. 70 miles in seven days. So we walked 10 miles a day um, and we took these packs. We actually carried more because the weather was no, crap. So cold, look at so, those videos. So we had to carry some more winter clothing, but it gave us the idea, it reminded us of the routine. Right. This is our third pilgrimage. And I think sometimes you have to be reminded of the hard stuff, the getting up and washing your laundry and just the routine of it all. That Ohio Camino really put me in the mental state that I needed to be in. For training in general, I would recommend walking on a variety of terrain. Walk on pavement, walk on sidewalks, walk in gravel, dirt trails. 
And it's not a matter of how far you can walk in one day. It's about being able to walk every day. Yeah. You know, most people can tackle a half marathon once. And I remember back when we used to do half marathons, we would do a half marathon and then we were beat for two or three days afterwards. Yeah. Now we're walking, you know, close to a half marathon a day, consecutive days. And uh, that wear and tear on your body can really be overwhelming. Yeah, so that's absolutely. what you need to be prepared for. Kate Wilson asks, do we walk with music, audiobooks, or podcasts? Well, that depends on if I've said anything really stupid and pissed Michelle off. Wah, wah. <laughs> we both have them on our phone, and we both have wireless headphones so that we could even share music, book, podcast, whatever. And yet we haven't listened to anything. Not a single one. But we've had this amazing scenery. We've had some great conversations and sometimes just walking in the quiet is nice. Uh, I will say I have a music playlist for when we have a really bad day, but we haven't even gotten to that. Oh. You know, the one thing I, I will say that we get in, what the deepest conversation we get into <laughs> is talking about what our next adventure is going oh, to be. Oh, planning our, we get into so much trouble when we're on the trail in that regard. We have, we go from one plan to a different to, hey, what about this idea? By the time you see something on our channel, it's really not plan A or plan B. It's like plan <laughs> M or N because we've gone through so many different versions of it, often on days like today while we're walking. But this is the way to have our daydream alive and well. Just Arlie wants to know, is the path well marked? Some days, yes it is. Usually. Other days, not always. You learn how to look for signs. So we see this little guy a lot with arrows. Sometimes we just see arrows. Sometimes we see that red and white, well, faded red and white sticker posted to street signs or fence posts or the sides of buildings. The closer we get to Rome, the more often we see them. We went through some phases where we didn't have as many signs as I would like to have. Now we do know some pilgrims that have only used the signs and they've done just fine. Mostly. We are happy with our combination of reading the book, Cicero book by Sandy Brown, reading that and getting a little description of the trail, having the Slow Ways app so that we can see if we decide like, let's take a detour to go get food. Right. We can see how to get back on the trail. So it's a combination. But Is it well marked? Not as well as the Camino Francis, but we haven't gotten lost. Yeah, and I don't feel like we've even, in towns it's sometimes a little harder, but uh, for the most part, easy to follow. There you go. question comes from Beth Chauvin Goodrich. She asks how many miles we walk per day and what does that mean in hours that we've walked? So we're going to give you the answer in kilometers, but Brian's going to make sure it translates to miles. Down I'll do all the math down on the bottom. We're working in kilometers. Of course, Europe does. And the guidebook is in kilometers. Um, Google Maps is in kilometers. So that's just kind of what we're used to thinking in right now. So what we walk and what we like to walk are about two different things <laughs> Very on different. this trail. Uh, the stages are longer, and we knew that going in, but the stages are longer than what we're, we like. And the stages are hillier and there are less stops along the way. So this is completely different experience than the Camino Francis. So what we like to walk is about 20 kilometers a day. Or even a little less. Yes. <laughs> yeah, give me less, please. Today we're walking 25 kilometers. That's just the stage. Plus we're at that end 
where the momentum of Rome is helping us get there and do bigger days. Uh, as far as hours, we're walking about uh, four kilometers an hour, right, Brian? We are averaging right around four, sometimes mostly a little under four, um, sometimes a little over four kilometers per hour. But about 15 minutes a kilometer is has been a consistent average Time. for us. Four hours, <laughs> 19 Let's minutes, see, how are we doing? Seconds, total distance, 17.0 kilometers. Average pace, 15 minutes, 17 seconds per kilometer. So, so 15 minutes, 17 seconds per kilometer, and that's been with like three good size hills. Generally speaking, we're walking between four and six hours a day, plus any breaks that we have in the middle of the day. Like this morning, we took a break at a uh, bar and had a sandwich. We'll take another break here coming up soon and sit down and drink some water. And we brought some cookies for the afternoon snack before we get into town. So we don't count those into our walking time. So most days we try to arrive between one and two. Some days it's a little later, some days it's a little earlier. It's the nice thing about the Via Francigena, every day is a little bit different. Find Us Camping, great channel, check them out on YouTube, says, how did we learn about the Via Francigena? and then follow up with how did we become comfortable enough to walk across multiple countries without a guide. Michelle? Well, we learned about the Via Francigena first by, uh, it, it wasn't the Via Francigena, but it was really just about learning about pilgrimage. Um, pilgrimage in general, we watched the movie The Way, like most Americans, we watched that movie and we were like, oh wow, what's this Camino de Santiago? And so we did some research on that found a guidebook and we walked it. Then we found out, out about other pilgrimages. And so just doing some research by looking at guidebooks, we have discovered a whole plethora of trails in Europe yeah. that we want to discover. As far as um, being comfortable doing this without a guide, um, it's really not that bad. Mo I mean, you can hire a guide company, it can be very expensive and a lot of people will hire a guide company to take care of all their bookings and their itinerary to do maybe a one week or a two week walk through Tuscany on the VF or through different areas of Switzerland or France. Uh, to do the whole thing, it would just be ridiculously expensive. Um, on our teacher budget. Especially on our budget. But we got comfortable with trails in general just by walking first our neighborhood and then walking our area parks, the trails on those parks, then walking national park trails. And so once I think you really understand how trail systems work, yeah. it, it's a skill that helps you around the world. Very true, it would be. We hope that this is encouraging everyone to get out and take an adventure. Next question, Wandering Wagners want to know if we miss our hot tub. Yes and no. Oh, 100% yes. It's 95 degrees. I wouldn't be in it anyway. <laughs> the only reason I, I mean, honestly, I miss it right now because my legs are sore yeah. every day because every day on the trail is leg day. It's true. So for that reason, I miss it. But uh, I know that we're going to have it back ready to go within the first week we're home. And plus, uh, keep an eye out because this fall, it'll be our one year anniversary with the hot tub. So we'll be doing a review of how we like it, the pros and the cons, and what we think about our inflatable hot tub in the garage. Inflatable Intex hot tub in our garage. Michelle, the Rolling Tones want to know top five road trip songs. Mm, okay, well, first of all, we aren't wearing earbuds. We have in the past listened to music, but we aren't on this pilgrimage as of yet, though. Who knows, there's 11 more days left. 
But what about you, Brian? In the RV, well, first of all, we are on the Via Romano. We are. So we are, I guess, on a road trip. Um, but for me, like when we're in our the RV driving, we love uh, putting on Pandora. What's the channel, Michelle? Lip Sync Road Trip Radio. There you go. Which has just got a lot of great classic rock. But for me, I'm always happy with anything by Billy Joel or Elton John or Queen. What about you, Michelle? Oh, I like Queen. Um, Pink, Mandiza, Old School Dixie Chicks. Anything that gets me feeling a groove. There you go. That's what we're listening to. How about you? Comment down below. Dana Barnes wants to know who is our cell phone provider. And that is definitely a question for the Cruising with the Coleman's chief financial officer. So I'm going to turn that over to Michelle. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, but um, we, the first Camino that we did, we had a regular SIM card that you put in your phone. That means our phones had to be unlocked to put a cell phone or a SIM card in there. And then what we did was we took our SIM card that we had and we just taped it to our passport. And that was with Orange. Year two, we got off the plane in Lisbon and we got a Vodafone. Never do that. We had terrible um, coverage for us and it was more expensive. A lot of people here in Italy have Vodafone, so I can't speak to that coverage. But this time we have an e-SIM card. Now phones still have to be unlocked. So that means that um, you have to have either paid off your phone or your phone carrier allows it to be unlocked. We use Orange. What I love about it is that I still have my regular SIM card. So if an emergency happened and we needed to have access to something, I don't know, back home, we could flip over just by hitting a button in our settings to um, use our other one. But we have had great coverage. I would say maybe one day where it was just okay coverage, but we've really liked the orange eSIM card for 20 gigs, 40 euro for a month. And, we and that's unlimited been... calls and texts. Yes, and that way we just have our phone on when we want um, and it's been great. Buongiorno. Good morning. It is day 40 on the Via Francigena. We have 10 days left to go. Can you believe oh, it? Oh wait, 11. Technically Sorry. 11. We have 11 so, days left to go. So we are here outside the hospital, uh, the hospital at uh, Saint uh, Pont de Abre. Pont Diabria. That's where we stayed last night. A very simple accommodation, but the bed was quite comfortable. Yeah. Um, and we're heading to San Corico today, which is 26 kilometers. The problem is it's going to hit 98 degrees. Yeah, but we're walking past three wineries, probably uh, all within the first couple of hours before it's, uh, when it's too early to our, actually stop and do anything. Our goal is to hit at least 18 kilometers today because there's a town where we could get a bus, we yeah. think, but Let's just see how the day goes. It's 6.45 in the morning. Um, for some pilgrims, we're leaving a little late, but this is the time we're leaving. And um, I don't know, I had a decent night's sleep. My body is still sore from yesterday's 25 kilometers in the heat, and today's gonna be hilly. Yeah, so. But I'm excited that, I mean, I just, every sign says Rome, or I should say Roma. Every sign says it, and so that's, that's the motivation right now. Well, let's hurry up before we miss this beautiful sunrise. <laughs> It's a new day. 
we are finishing up the questions. The next question comes from Lisa Apana, and she wants to know how the walk is going. So Brian, how's it going? Well, um, some days it's prettier than others. This one <laughs> so far today, not super pretty. Although we just walked through the village of Buon Convento, which yeah. apparently is considered by many people to be one of the most beautiful villages in all of Italy. It was pretty. I it don't know pretty. that it was we the didn't... most beautiful. We didn't see much of it. We didn't see much and it was eight o'clock in the morning, so not very lively. I think the walk has been hard. Yes. It has been the most difficult trail we have ever done, in part because of the hills and in part because of the length of the stages and then also in part of the lack of services. So that has trifecta of the most difficult trail we've ever as done. As far as our Camino trails, yeah. yeah. Um, are you having fun? I am having fun. I think the better follow-up question... Wait, why are you having fun? Because I'm with you. Ah, I had to work for that one, people. Um, <laughs> I think the better follow-up question to how has the walk been is would you do this walk again? I think there are too many trails for me to say I'd ever walk it again. Like, I typically don't say that. I mean, I'd go back to a national park because we haven't finished all the trails. Right. We would probably bike Canterbury to where we started, but I doubt we would do this part again. And that's not because of the trail alone. It's just because there's so many other trails we want to explore. Feeling. Would you come back to Italy? Absolutely come back to Italy. Yes. We're creating a list of places we want to come back and visit. We just don't necessarily want to walk to them. That'll be our backpacking trip where we're backpacking, but we're not walking everywhere. Right. Or possibly a camper van. Ooh, you I know, like, like it. Through Italy for a summer. <gasps> or through Europe. Yeah. For a longer than a summer. So the walk is good, but um, yeah, I'm glad we're here, but I wouldn't necessarily come back and do it again. But it's a point. Really All right, Michelle. Yes. Becky Bauer wants to know what we fight about. Well, at the end of... <laughs> this is Michelle's question. <laughs> at the end of the day, we bicker because we're both tired. Hot, tired, hot, cranky. And exhausted. We argue about things that everybody else argues about. Brian wants to spend too much money on food. Move over to the right a little bit. There we go. Brian I want to spend too much do, money on food. Brian doesn't want to do what I want him to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, being on the pilgrimage together 24-7 doesn't really um, make the arguments any different from normal. Honestly, we're really dependent on one another on this pilgrimage for a successful trip. So, you know, Brian is Brian's doing the guiding and I'm, you know, managing the money and managing our lodging so typical stuff really um i mean let's face it everybody we were all quarantined in our houses for a little while right well so we've all had these periods of togetherness it's no different we just happen to be walking instead of sitting on the couch which is actually better better for because us because endorphins make you happy did you watch the movie legally blonde <laughs> <laughs> exercise gives you endorphins endorphins make you happy Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. And we're used to being together 24 seven during the summer. So it's nothing atypical, but it is true. When you're exercising a lot and your endorphins are high, it is less likely that you'll hurt another individual. <laughs> Becky also asked, have we had any paranormal experiences on the VF staying in all of these old convents and buildings and visiting the churches? We've had creepy experiences, creepy lodging. So yeah, we've had creepy moments, but not paranormal moments. Unfortunately, I would love that. We've had it before, other places we visited. Where have we had it before? Stanley Hotel. Don't you know? I don't know. Stanley Hotel oh, in yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Colorado. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, Estes Park, Colorado. You're we right, you're right, met you're right. Mrs. Stanley, the ghost. Yeah. Um, and then we've had a few other experiences that were just a little unusual. Here, we've not like, it's not like we've been in a 800 year old monastery and heard footsteps in the middle of the night or anything like that. I'm really glad about that because we were all alone. Michelle, can you hear that? Listen, can you hear it? What am I listening for? It's the sound of Brunello calling you up that hill. Oh, that, no. Yeah, that winery is 300 meters from us, no. but look at where it is. No. That one's easy to pass up. Yep. 
on the ammo. Plus the fact that it's only 918 in the morning. Those who glamp together want to know. They have four questions actually, so we're gonna break them up. I was gonna say, but make sure you check out their channel. Fantastic people. So Mike and right. Joni wanna know, this sounds like a Mike question. What do you do when nature calls? Well, we do not have a glamorous RV bathroom like you do in Wait, your Tandera. Don't talk about it. I miss my less than glamorous bathroom right now in the RV. So peeing is easy. You do that anywhere. I could do it here. Point. Oh. I could do it there. I could do it there. Well, that's a little rough because of the hill. But I could do it. <laughs> but yeah, that's easy. Um, Number two, you have to be a little more strategic. Yeah, you have to, well, first of all, your body gets used to it. So your body's like, oh, I'm gonna go first thing this morning because I know there's a toilet. And then usually within two kilometers of being done, my body says, it's time again. Yeah. Well, we've been pretty lucky. We did not bring anything to uh, dig a hole on the side of the road. So that's not happening. Not like not backpacking. Happening. We have been backpacking, but this we're been pretty fortunate. Michelle, they're so much louder. Look how close we are. Nope, not yet. It's not wine time yet. There's still another hill in front of us. Do you know how hard it is for cruising with the Coleman's to walk past I know. a winery? I know. And I'm not saying me. I'm saying us collectively. <laughs> I think it's you. I think you're the one. I'm the problem. Winery number three. Now this has just become cruel and unusual punishment. I will say I am agreeing with him at this point. I mean, Hello. come Winery on, number people. Four, 800 meters. Caparzo. I can do anything for one kilometer is the winery we have decided to stop at. We have. It's official. It's official. Okay, those who glam together, question number two, Mike and Joni wanna know, how many days have we had to take off, Brian? Had to take two. One, because I had shin splints, the beginning of them, and we didn't want them to get worse. So we bust ahead and took a, just an easy day and unexpectedly because of that and iced and then the second one i had a work call and really it wasn't the mood walk but we've also had planned rest days how many have we had brian we think four or five i think we've had five and those were days that we like to plan um some people have the philosophy of you know take a rest day when you need it because of an injury or exhaustion right we like to plan our rest days in advance so that we prevent injuries and exhaustion and sometimes it's because it's a city we want to go to right like we wanted to go to the beach yes so we planned that rest day yeah as if it weren't a guarantee that we are stopping here for eight euro i get a glass of san giovese a bottle of water and a sandwich done finito I'm done. For eight euro, but we've also read reviews from other pilgrims saying they got the wine tasting where they tasted eight different Sangiovese wines. I'm gonna have both because then, first I'm gonna ask if they'll call me a taxi because today I've decided to just enjoy the view. All right, those who glamp together also want to know, has there been anything that's made us particularly uncomfortable along the trail? Not along the trail. If you were a single person walking, male or female, I think you'd be absolutely comfortable, even more comfortable than the Camino Francis. Never felt unsafe. Correct. Like danger of pickpockets or bandits or whatever. No, which there are some dangers on the Camino Francis that people have talked about. Um, uncomfortable, uh, the hills make me very uncomfortable. Some we've of the had road a walking. Lot. Oh, we've had some tough road walking, but um, you know, you just got to power through it with an attitude of just get out of my way because I'm walking here. <laughs> and then we've had a couple of lodgings that were just a little creepy. A little creepy. Because, you know, it's a 10th century monastery and we're the only people there 
in the middle of the night and it's just dark and empty and and you got to find your way to the bathroom down three stairs or something we've had some uncomfortable lodgings definitely some uncomfortable beds oh lots of uncomfortable Ugh. beds um lots of uncomfortable temperature wise no fan no air movement no nothing those are the biggest uncomfortable but moments. no real heebie-jeebie moments no no what else the wine is close let's go okay via Francigena Pilgrim's Break. With bread. See. So we have enjoyed some wine and have decided to take the bus to our destination. And we tried in here to buy a bus ticket. Uh oh, there goes a the bus. Is that ours? Better not be, it's not funny. Okay. <laughs> so we tried to buy one, he said no. And then after we ate food at his restaurant, he said, well, maybe a tobacco shop, and now it's closed. And he said, well, why can't you just buy it on the bus? You just need to use the app, which we tried to explain, and he was at a loss. So another day, hopefully we can ride the bus. Otherwise, I'm sticking my thumb out. All right. No. We are in San Corico de Orchia. And to give you a summary, we started in Puerto What's de Arbia, walked 11 kilometers to the winery. Then someone at the winery offered to give us a ride back to Bon Convento so that we could catch the bus. This is the church. Can I stop the church? Is there a stamp? Sure. So we stopped back to Bon Convento where we had lunch, took the bus, to San Corico, and now we are ready to find our lodging after stopping in this church, and then we'll tell you about the bus update. Okay. So let's talk about the bus update. On the bus stop sign, it oh, said... Go back though, the guy who offered to give us a ride, from New Jersey owns franchises of Wendy's. So shout out to him for the yeah. kindness. Thank you. We didn't catch his name. We did not. Um, but here's the bus ticket information. So at the bus stop, it said, buy your ticket on the bus. Or buy the app, which we can't use. Or, or at the tobacco shop, which was closed. Or at the bar that had the sign to buy tickets that they said they don't sell tickets anymore. So we got on the bus. I went up. I said to him in Italian, that I wanted two tickets to San Corsia. He replied back to me in English, no, don't worry. We're not gonna belabor this point. <laughs> it's just frustrating because you want to do the right thing and pay for your ticket. So every time we ride a bus, we will continue to try to buy tickets, but so far it's not working out. We'll make a donation to whoever wants our money. <laughs> it's not much. The last those who've went together question. Jeez, you guys want to know a lot. Um, hey, I like that. What are the highs and lows of our trip so far? How much time do you have? <laughs> yeah. uh, the lows. I'm going to start with that and then um, I'll go to the highs. Okay. The heat. The heat. Oh, the heat. I mean, yeah. we know that as teachers, we know that we have to travel during the hottest time of the year. We know that. We expect it. It's one of those things where I can handle to like 90 but once it climbs between 90 and 100, and to the next, this coming week we're gonna have 102, it, it's it's really unbearable. And then I think the other thing is to complement that is a lot of places with no air conditioning, or they say they have air conditioning and it doesn't work. Well, and no shade on the walk. Yeah. So that has been very hard. Walking um, into the sun, I mean, you could see it in our faces. Another big low for me was the Po Valley. 
I did not love the Po Valley. But to complement that, like the, the high to that is that we really got our walking legs on. I mean, we really- It did, we were able to do speed. big distance fast. And, and it gave us, it was a confidence builder. So though we were bored with it, we definitely, it boosted our confidence. Yeah, okay, so highs. Um, the Great San Bernard Pass was very high. Switzerland, <laughs> Switzerland was amazing. Yeah, Switzerland really beautiful. was truly beautiful. And after the Great San Bernard Pass, the Aosta Valley was absolutely I have, stunning. I have more photos of wildflowers from Switzerland than I'm gonna know what to do with. I'm gonna have to do a whole video on just wildflowers. The other high is Tuscany. It's amazing. Uh, it's despite beautiful. the heat, yeah, Tuscany has been absolutely Stunning. beautiful. I think the other, for me, the last, the biggest high of, of all of it is the little villages where you see the, the real people. Like we're interacting with locals in a way that tourists never get to do. And I love that so much. I love the relationships that we've built. I love the people that we've gotten to know. And definitely we have a list of places to go back to. Yeah. Um, and then I, for me, probably the last high would be um, dinner every night. No, it's always about the food for me. It's always about the food. But um, the food has just almost every night been truly outstanding. Almost every night. Yeah. There have been a few meals that have been misses, but they have been far, few and far few between and far compared between. to any other trip we've ever been on. Honestly, even in the States, we've yeah. had a lot more hits than misses and we understand how to order food. Our Italian has improved. Yeah. My Italian right now, I'm like, an, I have the Italian of like a four year old with a really advanced palate. That's better than in Spain. In Spain, you had a three year old palate. Yeah, that was true. Or three year old vocabulary. Vocabulary. So with I'm doing palate. pretty well. <laughs> I'm probably a two year old, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. So if you haven't been watching the videos all along and you had to go back and watch one video right now, it would probably be the Great St. Bernard Pass video. Yes. And then the one right after that, I can't remember what that one was called, but that was the Aosta Valley. Those two videos were probably some of the most beautiful scenes we've had. Yeah. Thanks, Mike and Joni. The next question comes from En Route with Chuck and Sherry. Thanks for the question. They want to know, Brian, when are you going to make share bears? Well, share bears are a cocktail that we did. I believe that was the blueberry ginger fizz. It was at the Wandering Wagner's meetup. Meet up. And um, they are delicious. And we will be doing a bunch more cocktails in the fall. It's been interesting here in Italy. Um, it's not really a cocktail culture. Mm -mm. So what we've been getting, um, Michelle gets gin tonics. Uh, you might have heard us talk about them. <laughs> um, I tend to get the Negroni. The other cocktail that's really popular is the Spritz. Uh, made with Aperol or some other bitter. So really the spritzes and the Negronis are the only two big cocktails. Gin tonic is somewhat common. But you don't have cocktails in front of but you. But we are in... Um, Tuscany. Tuscany. And we're actually in the heart of the Montepulciano Brunello wine country. And actually a couple of the different bars on the streets here um, actually had on their signs, no spritz. <laughs> yeah. Because that's not we're what you drink country. here. That'd be like going to Napa and ordering a rum and coke. So of course we're gonna make share bears in the fall you can check us out on tiktok we just started cocktails with the coleman's because we thought we would have more cocktails this summer but instead we've been sharing all of our wonderful food pictures from italy and at the wandering wagner's meetup we'll definitely have cocktail hour going and we'll show you here today this is a selection of pecorino cheeses six different pecorino cheeses they come with the fly and we have a tasting of three different Brunello wines. Yeah, 2017 winery uh, wines. And uh, I'm ready to start, so salute. Cheers. Michelle at the Neighborhood Nest wants to know, how's the eating going? I say, it's going just fine. <laughs> I love pasta. The eating is going just fine meaning that the food is better than any food we've ever had. It has been flavorful and wonderful, and I've absolutely enjoyed every minute of it. But the Neighborhood Nest Amber is a gluten-free bakery out of Fairborn, Ohio, where we're from. And so I know the question is specifically related to how the gluten is going. Well, uh, I take a pill and we'll link it below and it's in a blog. I have a blog called Gluten Is Not My Friend. And that has helped 
The challenge is that gluten is everywhere. So for breakfast every day, you'll find a breakfast bar like this. My options are to make tea, coffee, and then like there are these prepackaged croissants, biscuits, something. And oftentimes that's all there is. So we'll go to a bar or a cafe. And the problem there is it's a panini or a croissant or some sort of. The only difference ball. is the pastries are super fresh. There. Yeah. yeah. And when you're walking, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't know what to do if I went pure gluten free. Uh, when I did it the last time in 2017, the first time I would say, just give me ham and cheese with no bread and it gets really old really fast. So could you walk the Via Francigena if you were celiac? I think that some people do. I think it's extremely difficult. I am fortunate that I have a wheat allergy that is only on the moderate scale. So oftentimes you'll see my wheat belly protruding if I've had too much. Tonight for dinner, I had pulled pork, tomato, red onion. I had no gluten at all, which was very nice. So I avoid it when I can. I indulge when I need to or when I have to. But otherwise, the food is fabulous. Thank you for sending all your questions. We really enjoyed answering them. We had a great time answering the questions. They got us through a really long day. And as you can see behind us, we've made it to Rome. Don't worry, there's gonna be lots more videos coming and blog posts uh, as we finish our Via Francigena on our way to Rome. And uh, make sure you check out our 48 Hours in Rome video that'll be coming soon. Yeah, no, there's a spoiler alert here that we made it. However- <laughs> You the, knew that already. The adventure between when you see this video and Rome, oh my gosh, you're not gonna wanna miss it.